boys and girls, students of different levels, students of Buddhist Sunday school and Dharma classes, parents and grandparents, and teachers of Buddhist Sunday school and Dharma classes. Good morning. May you all be well, happy, and peaceful. Now we are going to do a presentation titled Moral Values the Young Must Develop. Now, this is an important educational presentation that teaches us the important virtues or moral values that we must have in order to be happy, peaceful, and successful. Now, this presentation has the text in English and Chinese. The Chinese is was done using Google Translate, so it might not be 100% accurate, but it can give you a fair idea, a better idea of what the presentation is about. And you will see some animation also. The presentation has altogether 16 slides. Now, as usual, we will launch the PowerPoint and I'll go over each slide to see what are the moral values which are so very important for our happiness, peace, and success. So now let us show the slideshow from the beginning. And now you see the cover slide, the title slide. And you can see the various values listed out here in the title, right? And you have the various values. We'll go over all these. Huh? And of course, here I put in these two animated uh, young grads. They are happy, they are peaceful, they are successful because they have very good values, right? So now let us go on to the... Second slide now. Right now, what is this second slide? The second slide is on the first of the moral values, and that is honesty. Now, teaching the young to be truthful and honest in their words and actions will help them build trust and integrity. Now, this actually is directed to not only teachers, parents, grandparents, but also to the young people themselves. They should know that this moral value of honesty or kejujurana is very, very important. Now, if you want to be very successful, this quality is very important. If you don't develop this quality and make it a habit to be honest, a conditioned mind of honesty, then you will get into trouble one day and you will fail in your undertakings and so on. I think you have heard the story of the boy who cried wolf, right? And uh, that goes to show how important it is to be honest. Otherwise, in time to come, people will not trust you anymore. And when people do not trust you, then you're going to really lead a miserable life. Even your family members don't trust you. And maybe later on when you work, right, you also are not trusted by your managers or bosses. And even as a student, you will gain a bad reputation if people know you as a dishonest student. Isn't it? So honesty is indeed the best policy as we have put in the animated image. So I hope you bear this in mind that this is also a very important quality for Dharma practice. We must not lie, we must not cheat, must not con people or swindle people as today you hear of all sorts of scams and uh, cheating, isn't it? And that is actually breaking a precept already. Right? So you see how important this is, honestly. Now let us go on to slide number three now, which is the second of the moral values, and that pertains to respect. Right? Now I'll read that first, and then after that explain a bit. 
teaching the young to respect themselves, other people, and the environment will foster empathy, tolerance, and kindness. Now, let me explain. As I said, this is not only, you know, directed to the teachers and parents. It's also the young people. In fact, all people, lah. All right, then we must develop this very good quality of respect to respect ourselves that we are a human being of dignity. So, if you want people to respect you, you must respect yourself as a worthy human being, not to do things which are bad, things which spoil your reputation, right? And then people would no longer like sort of uh, regard you as a worthy person, you know. They don't respect you already. So it's so important, uh, this quality of respect. And today is very lacking among uh, many students even. I have taught for more than 35 or 40 years. I can see the downward trend, you know, right? Those days, you know, the students were more respectful. Now, uh, we are lacking in etiquette, courtesy, manners, you know. Right? So, then what will people think of you? People who are disrespectful, <laughs> that includes uh, the adults also, will not command the respect of other people. People won't look up to them. So, how are you going to be successful if people don't look up to you? You will not get the promotion. Uh, people think of you as very proud, right? So, now when you have this quality of respect, not only for yourself, of course, very important, respect to other people like your parents, la, the elderly people, and then also the monks and nuns, religious people, and in fact, all beings, la, you have to respect, isn't it? And we must respect the environment also. But today, sad to say, people don't respect their environment at all. Now we have an environmental crisis because people pollute the environment, do very harmful things to the environment like open burning and so on. So this will bring in lots of trouble and dukkha. Now if we practice this respect, then this will promote empathy. Empathy means that you begin to grow uh, in compassion, uh, you can feel for other people uh, who are suffering. So that's why you respect them. And then uh, you find this feeling of compassion, feeling for other people's problems or suffering. And then also, you can practice tolerance and avoid trouble. Like, Certain people might not have the same views as you or they may do things that you don't really like, but you have to respect their right to do this as long as they do not block the law, they will get into trouble anyway, right? So then uh, there will be tolerance and harmony. And when you have this respect being developed, uh, then naturally also uh, the feeling of kindness will grow. You're more kind. Right? You're more kind to the person. You respect that person. Uh, you li you li uh, so you see, uh, this is a very good moral virtue, virtue to develop. Now let us go on to slide number four. Now this is the very important virtue of more of responsibility, but tanggung jawab. Now, let me read this first before I comment. Instilling a sense of responsibility in the young will help them understand the consequences of their actions and develop a strong work ethic. Actually, this responsibility virtue applies not only to the young, actually. It applies to all people. Because there are also adults who are not responsible. Even people in high positions People of authority, not responsible, don't carry out their duties properly, not responsible for the tasks or projects that they are doing. And because of that, they cause so much suffering to other people. And that is a bad deed. It has a karmic consequence. So, you see how important it is. Nobody would like an irresponsible person, isn't it? Now, let's take the case of students. If the student given a project, 
is not responsible. He has that tidak apa attitude. He doesn't carry out the work. He doesn't do his duties huh, of discharging the responsibility. So what is the consequence? He can be punished huh, sometimes uh, in the school because he didn't do the work assigned. Not responsible. Tidak apa. And then also his reputation can be spoiled. In time to come, people say this fellow uh, cannot be trusted. One, uh, irresponsible. Uh, given the thing he won't do one. Uh. So imagine what sort of response, uh, what sort of things will happen, uh, bad things that happen to you if you are an irresponsible person. So if you are wise, uh, uh, then uh, you will think of the consequences. Wow, if I am irresponsible, I can I don't carry out my duties. What will be the, the actions? At different levels, you have the bad actions. In the families, also you may be reprimanded, uh, punished because given a task you didn't do, and your parents might punish you. In school, likewise. And later on, in, in your workforce, in your company, if that person is irresponsible, doesn't carry out the task or work given to him, especially uh, uh, to be on time, uh, right? Irresponsible. So affecting uh, adversely many things, isn't it? The company may suffer a loss because of your irresponsible behavior and causing a terrible hardship to all people. So you don't have a strong work sense. Uh, you don't have a strong work ethic. This is being unethical uh, because you are irresponsible. Uh, so being responsible is important. And the responsibility, you don't blame on others. Uh, you starts with you, with me. And we are responsible for our happiness and peace. If we are responsible, then people look up to us, they respect us, they know we can be trusted. Isn't that a good thing? And also, you know that if you are practicing a Actually, you have a responsibility you know, to learn the Dharma so that you won't do the wrong things and cause suffering not only to yourself but to others. And so you find it applies in our worldly world, our worldly affairs, lah, and also in the practice of Dharma in your religion to be responsible. right? So this is a very important virtue, quality that we must develop. Irresponsible people, huh? they take things lightly, they don't bother, they are not mindful. The, what the Malay word says, uh, leche, a uh, very, very good word. Uh, <laughs> a good word to describe this, this bad trait uh, of irresponsibility. So that is slide number four. So now let us go on to number five, which goes on to the fifth moral virtue or value we must develop. And this pertains to kindness. And this is one of the most important things. In Buddhism, right, we like the word metta. Now, metta actually is not just kindness, but it's also love in a very high level. Not the kanjing romantic love, I love you, you love me. You know? So, you see, metta is translated as loving kindness. So, this kindness is a very important quality. That's why, you know, Great motivators or great, great spiritual teachers of different religions talk about the importance of being kind, right? Uh, Chan Brahm coins a word called kindfulness. We practice mindfulness and kindfulness. There's no kindfulness, actually, there's kindness. But then it's quite a nice word to be invented, a uh, kinder. So teaching the young to be kind and compassionate towards others will promote empathy, understanding, and cooperation. Now, let me explain this. Actually, of course, we hear directly to the young people, but we must bear in mind this also applies to all people. That people, all people, young, middle-aged, old, must be kind, must be compassionate towards all other sentient beings, not only human beings, but also animals and our environment and uh, the plants, <laughs> kind, uh, uh, don't uh, unnecessarily uh, destroy the plants and so on. Uh, that is not being kind, isn't it? So, you see, this will develop again, as I said just now already, develop a sense of compassion. That means you can feel uh, the problems people have. You can feel for yourself the suffering. Everybody has suffering, right? They have dukkha. 
so we can build for themselves. Then uh, you find, uh, wow, why uh, should I add to their suffering by being unkind? Isn't it? So if you're kind to that person, wow, that person, uh, you find her uh, will, will be more happy. And his suffering goes down. So you are empathetic. Empathy. Very good, isn't it? And then uh, it develops your understanding of people. Actually, the wisdom is growing. Uh. Right? When you have compassion, metta, everything, uh, wisdom will grow. You, know? you can feel it. And then when you have the kindness uh, right, for all people, like for example, you are working with other people in company, you are being kind to people, so you will not just let them do the work and don't give the cooperation, right? You will also cooperate with them because you feel compassion for them, you are kind, so you want to cooperate with them. So everything turns out better. Everything goes on smoothly, isn't it? Huh? So uh, you see how important this kindness is and all religions teach this. The opposite is uh, being cruel, right? Being bad, being evil, right? Uncaring. Uh, all those uh, will generate the bad karma. Whereas kindness uh, definitely will generate good karma. And good karma will have the fruits. You can feel or you can get the good fruits or the good results this life and also future lives because you have practiced very well this kindness. Uh, you can uh, see for yourself these uh, images later on, right, on your own and you see how important it is. Now, let us now move on to slide number six. Now, I will let you reflect and think for a while this first. Right. Okay, so this number six, the moral virtue or, or moral value is on gratitude. And this is one of the very, very important moral values. And the Buddha spoke about it, how important it is to be grateful for so many things that you have got as blessings and how to be grateful to so many people, including, of course, the most important, your parents who have really done a lot for you. But today, you find that uh, many people uh, take things for granted. They are not grateful. So now let us read this first and then I will comment. Teaching the young to appreciate and express gratitude for the things they have as well as the kindness shown to them will promote positivity and resilience. Now let us look at this. Now this actually, as I say just now, is not just applicable to the young, you know. Uh, to develop gratitude. It applies to all people. Today also, you have so many adults uh, that don't show gratitude. They are not grateful for the things they have. They only practice the four C's. You know what the four C's are? Always complaining, complaining, and then criticize all things. Not constructive criticism, you know, just criticize. And then after that, condemning, uh, condemning this, condemning that, but without offering any help or constructive suggestions, and then cursing. Well, you should be grateful for so many good things you have. Of course, things are not perfect. So we have uh, reflect and see what we can do to improve the situation. If you cannot, then we must be patient to accept some of those imperfections. Uh. So, gratitude is a very important thing. The Buddha, in one of the scriptural uh, sayings, uh, in I think Amguttara Nikara, uh, the Buddha said two types of people very hard to find. One is a person uh, who very spontaneously will do a kind act. Uh, that is uh, to practice kindness. Uh, uh, very difficult to find a person. No need to ask. He will help. He will do the dana everything. Not easy to find these type of people. That's why today you have so few volunteers, uh, even in the Buddhist association, uh, and also other bodies. Uh. And then the second type of people very hard to find is a person who is grateful. That is very true. They take things for granted. And this is not a good thing. And all religions teach the importance of being grateful. 
being grateful for so many things that you already have, isn't it? A good home, you have food to eat, and then you have education, and then you have even some comfort and some even luxuries of smartphone, you know, iPad and all those things. And then the other thing is to be kind to so many people who have helped you, who have been kind to you, right? Most important, your set of parents, and then your grandparents or your relatives, your uncles, aunties, and then your friends, your teachers, and then the monks and nuns who, who have, have helped you to share with you or to teach you important dharma. So have you been grateful? You say, yeah, yeah, in my heart, I am grateful. But great gratitude has to be expressed out. Just not nobody knows, ma. So it's only when you express our, ah, uh, then you feel the joy and other people knowing and then they will be having very good feelings and vibes for you. So many ways of expressing, uh, giving thank you cards, uh, saying thank you. And then uh, sometimes, you know, uh, they give gifts during certain occasions and many ways, uh, you know, how to show gratitude, isn't it? Uh, like parents, right? Or Mother's Day, right? I see that some also do that good practice of appreciating the mother and giving a present or taking up for dinner and so on. So that is number uh, that is number six. Uh. Now let us go on to number seven now. Slide number seven is on generosity. Uh. That is the seventh, uh, the seventh moral virtue uh, or moral value. Now, generosity, of course, you know the opposite of generosity is kedekut, uh, stingy, miserliness, uh, selfish. Uh. So, today you find not many people are really that generous, right? To want to do dana in so many ways. Dana doesn't mean money, you know. You are generous with your help, you are generous with encouraging people, you are generous in uh, complimenting, uh, praising people who deserve it. So many ways. Uh. Uh, let me read this first. Encouraging the young to be generous and share their resources, time and talents. And this will help them develop a sense of empathy and compassion for those in need. Uh, this, uh, the, the positive things uh, like getting, developing uh, compassion, uh, the one I mentioned. Now let's look at this more closely. As I emphasize just now, it's just not uh, the teaching the young this that the adults also we have to practice all levels. Uh, right? And this generosity is a very, very important perfection or what we call paramis. And the Pali word is dana. Dana translates as uh, giving, charity, generosity, to cut the ego self, uh, to cut the Selfishness. And this selfishness and always thinking of oneself only uh, is one of the root causes of dukkha. Because you all only think of yourself, you don't think of others. So you don't want to do dana. Right? So a person who is very generous, open-hearted, very willing to uh, share with others, they share their resources, what they have. Right? They even uh, help uh, in terms of you know, their time. They spend the time to maybe, you know, help the fellow to do the homework or, you know, uh, so many ways. Uh. And then they have certain talents uh, they want to teach other people. That's also very good. But you find that uh, today, uh, many people practice the opposite. To be selfish. To only be self-centered. And you look at TikTok, uh, you can see uh, many people are very interested because they can enjoy themselves, everything all themselves. And then you find that some, uh, you ask them to do uh, some little dana, they won't. But they would pay maybe $500, dollars right? To go for a concert, uh, maybe co-play uh, now. I don't know. Uh -uh. I'm not saying you cannot go for that, you see. But what I'm trying to say is that do not forget the people who are less fortunate, who are suffering. So let us practice some charity. Then you got also some extra money or what uh, you want to once a while enjoy yourself. There's nothing wrong. But today uh, it's all just me, I, mine, myself. That's all. Right? So you can see, you know, that's why the TikTok is very popular because uh, uh, it, it makes you, you know, like, wow, very, feel very nice, right? But spend so much time uh, instead of reaching out to people 
uh, in charity and so on, uh, that is not really uh, wise, it's not balanced. Uh. So you see how important it is. So this generosity is the seven moral value we should develop. Now I will let you read for a while again the next moral value, which is one of the most important. Uh, then you reflect before I discuss. Now, it's in the scriptures also, this quality of diligence, hard, being hardworking, industrious, is one of the most important huh, in one's happiness, peace and success. Now, let's take the worldly things first before we touch on the Dharma. Instilling this very important virtue in the young will help, to will help them to practice diligence a most important ingredient for success in life. Now, you got to really inculcate when young. Uh, this is very important, you know, uh, to inculcate in young, maybe, you know, through stories, through motivation, uh, accounts. Uh, all right, so at young, uh, wow, they see, see this person so successful. And if you look at the history of science or even in history, people are so successful, the inventors, the writers, the scientists. Uh, you think, uh, they achieve all the success and the fame uh, just by sitting down and doing nothing? No. People, as I've told many times, uh, the scientist, great scientist Thomas Edison, uh, he tried how many times? Uh, so diligent. He uh, right? tried a few hundred times uh, in investigating how to get the electric bulb working. He was very, very diligent. And finally, after the know, seven, eight hundred times, he succeeded. So if he had not been diligent and uh, just given up, uh, no perseverance, uh, then he cannot be successful, isn't it? So this is a very important ingredient for success in life. Who would like a person who is lazy? The opposite is uh, laziness, uh, isn't it? So even uh, in school, uh, teachers don't like uh, lazy students, isn't it? And if you are in the family and you are not diligent in helping around, uh, the, uh, other members are doing all the work and you are lazy and you don't help at all, not diligent, then of course uh, you uh, will not be sort of uh, liked uh, right, by many others in the family also. And likewise, very important in the company, next time when you are in the workforce, uh, then you are showing the laziness. Uh, sleepiness, la, laziness, slot topper. La. You're not diligent in your work. You think the boss will like you? Ah? Will give you promotion? Ah? Will give you bonus? Ah? It's unlikely, isn't it? Right? It might even get the sack, you know. So, but then uh, you say, why is it that the person is not diligent? Ah, you see, it's because it's not inculcated inside the mind when the person is young. It's very important. If it's not inculcated the young, uh, that person grows up being very lazy, postponing things, procrastination, all sorts of, you know, not very nice uh, uh, traits, uh, not diligent enough. Uh. Then when he becomes an adult, he's also not diligent. So can he be successful? Look at the university students or the graduates. You think all those that get top honors uh, or go into... Uh, very famous universities, uh, Harvard or Cambridge, Oxford, you think they are not hardworking, uh, they can just get there. Of course, they are also intelligent, but intelligence alone, uh, without diligence, you cannot be successful. I have taught students who are very, very intelligent, but I call them up in Form 6, I say, you're not hardworking, you are not putting in the work, you won't get good results. You say, don't worry, I'll study last moment, in the end, a lousy result. Because no diligent, consistent work, uh. Ah, so you can see how important this is. Now let us uh, move on right, to the next slide, which is slide number nine already. Okay. Oh, no. Ah, yeah. Right. So slide number nine is on the very important paramis also, and that is patience, the sabara, nicing. Now you find that the Pali word is kanti. Right, Kanti. Uh, just now before I for, uh, forget also, I forgot to mention diligence uh, is also very important in the Dharma practice. If you are not diligent, uh, 
in carrying out your dharma practice, like always doing the dana, uh, always uh, cultivating, uh, diligently doing your meditation, diligently diligently doing your study of the Buddha's teaching, then you can never make any progress. You cannot progress in your spirituality. That's why the Buddha even say diligence is one of the very, very important qualities. Uh, Dharma-wise also, I spoke about the worldly things. Uh. Now, patience is scanty. Teaching the young patients will help them develop self-control, emotional regulation, and the ability to wait for things without becoming frustrated or impulsive. Now, of course, uh, you say, oh, only young people uh, have to be patient. Uh. No, all people must be patient. But this is directed at the young because you have great hopes of developing this quality and then when you become adults, uh, automatically you are patient. You know? So today we have so many adults uh, who are impatient, uh, right? You see, it's because they were not trained uh, and the quality of kanti or patient was not developed when they were young, right? So when they become adults, this is already a habit already. Uh, cannot wait. Uh, even adults also like that, right? So you see, that's why it's important to develop when you are, develop this quality when you are young. And you have many problems that describe this. No pain, no gain. He that wants the fruit must climb the tree, right? Patiently, right? And then on the road, you find uh, people drive so fast and recklessly because they are not patient. They beat the traffic lights. Uh, they plow the traffic rules. Uh, so one who is not patient can become a patient. A uh, patient in the hospital. Uh, <laughs> isn't it? Especially like say a road uh, user, uh, uh, not patient, it becomes a patient, accident occurs. Uh. So, why? Now, you see, when you cultivate these patients, uh, then you have self-control, uh, right? You know how important it is, then you reflect, wow, even Buddha was so patient, uh, cultivating six years of really hard uh, practice, uh, suffering, you know, practice the uh, ascetic practice, I uh, was patient, you know, Right until finally, uh, after six years, uh, then it became enlightened. Then you reflect. So it's so important that we can control ourselves. Otherwise, if we are impatient, what will happen? Anger arises, the frustration, all the negative qualities arising, and the body secrete all those harmful chemicals because you get angry, you get upset, you get you, know, you feel very frustrated. Uh, there are people who die also. Uh, uh, because answering the call, uh, uh, so impatient uh, with the things uh, to happen, uh, cannot happen immediately, you see. So, uh, very angry and can also get a stroke or heart attack. So, you can control your emotions. Uh, uh, just like this picture, uh, waiting patiently. Uh, right? So, always have to watch your mind, you know. Right? Then, you see that, uh, wow, being patient is so good. Especially, let's like, say, you're waiting in the queue. Uh, how patient are you? Are you always looking at your watch and then you're so very angry waiting so long? Whereas you can always do so many things. Some of them will read while they are uh, queuing. Some will just close their eyes in the meditation, right? Some will just watch the mind and uh, reflect on that. But so many ways la, right, to be patient and then everything will come to pass. Then your turn will come. Emotional regulation, as I said just now, you can control uh, your emotions like anger, frustration, being upset being sad, and so on, because you use wisdom and mindfulness, noting what happens. So you have this ability in you already to wait for things, wait for your turn. Not today, many young people, you find a rush for the food, uh, don't want to queue up, uh, impatient, uh, they want it first. Again, that is the norm and sim. Uh, want the, the things for themselves. Fast, fast. Uh, no patience. So if no patience actually you cause a lot of trouble, not only to yourself, but to other people. You rush, then accidents happen. Uh, the drivers rush, no patience, beat the traffic lights, accidents happen. So develop this quality, then you will be more peaceful, more happy, less frustrated or impulsive and do some do terrible things, like cut queue uh, and then get accident, impulsive already. All right? So that is this. Uh, always think of others also. Uh, we need two things, patience and love for uh, uh, others. Now let us go on to slide number 10 now. Mm -hmm.
Uh, this is self-discipline. Right? Now, is these successful people uh, are quite disciplined. Right? If you are not disciplined, it's like you are not having a bad, bad bone. Uh, let's say, for example, you are a student and then uh, you want to prepare for an exam. So you say, oh, I must make a timetable and then uh, I follow consistently, then I will be successful. That is true, right? You have a plan and then you follow. But there are many who make many timetables but don't follow. They don't have the discipline. The mind is weak, right? So uh, you're supposed to study or do this and then somebody phones you. Come, let's go out, have a drink or go to the supermarket. Can, can, can. <laughs> so you see, uh, so if you don't have self-discipline in whatever you do, uh, then how can you be successful? And then uh, the worst thing is, uh, you know, some keep on pro, uh, procrastinating, uh, postpone, postpone. Uh, then after that, meet with problems, cannot meet the deadline, or then, you know, people be not happy with them. All oh, the dukkha comes. Uh. You must develop good qualities, uh, and self-discipline is very important. To control yourself, you can't always, for example, do the things you like only, right? Some of the things you like, but they are not going to bring you good things in the end. Like you say, oh, you say, oh, really putting in the effort to study and so on. You like every time to go to a party and you don't have the discipline to control yourself. So how can you be successful in the exams? You can get all A's. Ah. I think you might even fail. <laughs> so helping the young develop self-discipline and self-control will empower them to make responsible choices and develop a strong sense of personal accountability. It's true. Because uh, if you have self-control, right, then you know already certain things you cannot just simply go and do and then uh, bring about terrible consequences. So you will know how to choose uh, with responsibility. And then even though that choice uh, may be a bit hard uh, to care, I mean, uh, the work that follows, uh, but you know it's good. And you say, I have the discipline. I will put in the effort and to see the thing through and be successful. And then also you see that you say, I must be self-disciplined. I must have discipline. Because if I don't, uh, like for example, I told you, uh, right? procrastination and putting off the thing and then leche so they are not accountable for the things and then the time comes no project are done late in handling the assignment and so on because of lacking in discipline to complete in time then what happens people say you huh? cannot even take care of your own affairs no, things like that no self-control uh, uh, this is a very good thing huh? Uh, some people have no control over the food eat and eat and eat until Becomes very, very fat and get all the sicknesses, right? Some have no control. Every time must watch the TikTok for how many hours? I'm not saying you cannot watch TikTok. I'm saying that you're spending so much time and some spend so much time glued onto the TV, don't do all the positive things for self-development or carry out their religious practices. Uh, so no self-control, uh, no self-discipline. Uh, this one is uh, self-discipline. Uh, uh, she knows there's a time to meditate, to make the mind strong and so on. So that is this number 10 now. So we have to go to number 11. Now let you read this again first. Ah, this is a moral value of humility. Who likes a proud person? Who likes an arrogant person? An egoistic person, nobody, I think, isn't it? Right? And there is this very important proverb: pride goes before a fall. It's very true. Huh? That means a person who is very proud, egoistic, ah, better be careful. It's a matter of time before you fall, before you meet with failure. Ah. You know, there are some people who are very, very proud. I have taught for so many years. I have also encountered some students, very smart, very intelligent, but very proud. But anyway, I could accept them maybe because of, you know, the upbringing or the young. So I slowly tried to educate them. And then later on, they became very humble and became very popular. People like them, isn't it? So instilling humility in the young will help them recognize their strengths and weaknesses be open to learning from others and treat everyone with respect and equality. Now, of course, uh, you, you can see, uh, uh, not only among the young, uh, even adults, there are some very, very proud. Uh, you can see even politicians uh, or people who are uh, having uh, uh, high ranks, uh, 
very, very proud and egoistic. You think they are popular? You think they are well-liked? No. Who are you? We are all just bees in samsara. We too will die anytime. Right? You have to reflect. Right? We, have to, we can die anytime, isn't it? Doesn't mean only old people die. You know? All ages can die. And disasters can trust you. So I uh, can strike you. So then you begin to think, hey, yeah, why so proud? Uh, so egoistic. Uh, I too, uh, you know, will just uh, go to dust, uh, from dust to dust. Uh, this way you begin to tell yourself wisdom. Then you're very humble. And the really good ones, uh, really uliawan, uh, that means uh, they are really brilliant, smart. They are actually very humble people. Only those half past six on, uh, sometimes tend to show off uh, egoistic. That's why uh, there is this problem. Empty vessels make the most sound. So, uh, we emphasize on the young because uh, if you develop this from young, then you can sustain to the adults. The adults, uh, some of them are very, very proud because of the, you know, the younger stage. Uh, right? Younger stage are not being educated enough on this line. It doesn't mean they cannot change now, but more difficult. Uh, young people, the best uh, inculcate. That's why this is dedicated to the young. But it doesn't mean... Uh, Cannot apply to the older one. Never too late to change, uh, as we say. Uh. So, so when we uh, inculcate this, uh, then they also have to understand. Uh, very important. Uh, you say, hey, why, why must we humble? I'm very good one. I always uh, get first in the class. Uh, but then, uh, if you know how to teach uh, right, them, right, nobody is perfect. You have your strengths and weaknesses. Right? Let's say you are good in these studies, but you are hopeless in the sports. Right? You are good in studies, but you don't know many other things. But a person will not be good in studies, but also they might be very talented in sports or music or what. So everybody have their strengths and weaknesses. That's all. Uh, everybody. right? So then why are you so proud? What is so special about you? Even Einstein was so humble. Right? And the great saints, uh, Mother Teresa, Muhammad Gandhi, la, Nelson Mandela, la, you see, so great people, you know, Nobel Prize winners, uh, some of them, uh, very humble. Uh, that is a very important, good quality. Great spiritual pe people, uh, people who are really spiritual, who follow their religious teachings very well, they are very humble people. And they are always open to learning from others. You cannot really be perfect. You think you are Buddha perfect, nothing else to learn, right? No, you see, that person uh, is willing, so his mind begins to grow. You, know? you can learn from so many other people, uh, from uh, what is happening around him. And uh, he treats everyone with respect and equality because he's humble. He knows everyone has his strength, right? He has certain things to offer also. So in this case here, wow. He becomes a very well liked person, right? And people like to interact with him and so on. So remember that, right? Humility is a very, very important virtue to develop. Now let us go on to number slide number 12. Now, number 12 is helpfulness. Now, this also pertains to Dana spirit, right? It's a bit of overlapping. Huh? Now, teaching the young the importance of helpfulness will work to develop an open heart and cut the ego and self-centeredness. Uh, this is a very important Dharma point. Uh, that actually is the ego. Uh, ego and self-centeredness. Always thinking, uh, I want to do it for myself. Very important is for the pillar, the I, the me, the mind. So, he doesn't, you know, have consideration or one or he doesn't want to help other people. He always wants to please himself, to gain things for himself or maybe and his family. So this, uh, instead of giving him the true peace and happiness, uh, they might give him certain pleasures for a certain period of time, but they are going to get great dukkha. If you don't cut the ego and self-centeredness. And how to cut the ego and self uh, self centeredness? This now we talk about humility, and then the other very important thing is generosity, dana, and this also connected with this to be very helpful, willing to serve other people in need. You see, ah, uh, so when we serve other people in need, even though uh, you know you think you are a big shot, but then uh, you are uh, with compassion in the heart, uh, you go forward and help the needy and so on. Then you find that your ego is being cut and your 
self-centeredness, uh, always thinking of the self uh, is being cut. And then the heart opens up, filling with meta-compassion. And you will find the joy developing, the happiness developing. Yes, you can really test up for yourself. Of course, you can say, oh, I have one day already. Uh, and then you find everything all good happens. Then you have to keep on cultivating. We come into the world with different karma. Some will take longer, some very fast, isn't it? You have to be patient. Uh, there's another moral quality. So, uh, so from here you can see uh, it's so important uh, to help. And the day I was reading the papers, terrible, this situation. Uh, uh, today, uh, you know, more people are, are interested to get the pay, uh, to get fame, you know, to be well known. No. So they see somebody maybe in an accident or needing help. Uh, instead of going to help the person, uh, they are busy taking the digital shots using their smartphone because they want to post it on Facebook and then they will get many, many likes huh? just for the ego and the self centeredness But now that person is really in need of the help. More important is not taking the photos but going to help the person. Uh, this way you cut your ego and self-centeredness and then you find the happiness, true happiness, peace and joy will slowly develop in your heart and mind. Well, I was very shocked. I read the account you know, uh, in the newspaper. It's true. Uh, so, you see, there was this uh, joke uh, <laughs> about an accident that happened, uh, right? right? So, you know, the owners were busy uh, looking at the car numbers instead of maybe taking a pro action uh, to call for the ambulance or police and so on. They were busy uh, taking... Uh, and then this person uh, who was, you know, lying flat on the ground already, uh, they thought he's dead already, uh, right? So, uh, so then... Uh, uh, there was one very helpful one, uh, uh, doctor uh, 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 came by uh, uh, came by and then uh, said that uh, uh, examine the person right and then the doctor said that he <laughs> the doctor maybe not so good uh, say he's dead already then after uh, just a short while uh, he stood up and said I'm not dead and then the onlooker uh, so busy in taking the numbers and everything uh, cannot even think clearly they say you shut up lah. you think the doctor doesn't know uh, the doctor is right uh, you are dead lah. actually the person is alive <laughs> so imagine uh, uh, when we are always thinking of the I, me, and the ego, uh, even our thinking uh, is off the direction already. So that is this very important point about helpfulness. Now let us go on to the slide number 13 now. Huh? It's acceptance. Now, acceptance is also a very, very important quality to develop. Many people uh, become very frustrated uh, because they cannot accept Things that happen to them. Certain things bound to happen to us. Things that are inevitable cannot be helped. Like the weather becomes very hot. Huh? Is that you don't, I mean, it's not that everybody wants it. It happens because of causes and conditions. So you cannot accept it. You cannot accept it, then you feel miserable. Huh? You, know, you will always complain, you will always criticize, you will curse, you will condemn huh? the policies again. Huh? So if a certain thing happens, Right? And you, thinking clearly, can do something to change it, then you change it. Right? No problem. But if certain things happen, you cannot, you know, right? You cannot change it already. Let's say, yeah, some maybe your pet uh, dog or what, or somebody in the family dies and so on. Uh, you can't change it. It's inevitable, right? That that comes to anybody anytime. So you cannot accept that. You cannot accept that fact. You cannot embrace it peacefully. Then what will happen? you will suffer. Uh. You will suffer longer. I'm not saying that you won't have dukkha. You have. But people who are very wise, uh, right, they will get away very, very fast. Arahans, uh, even when Buddha passed away, they don't feel any sadness already because they know reality is natural. You see? So, as acceptance is very important. But this acceptance, uh, you see, you know, it's not only for young people. Uh, you must understand it's not only for young people, it's for all. right? And they... This acceptance teaches young people to peacefully embrace, uh, accept things that cannot be helped. Uh, like the eight worldly conditions, they blow. Uh, sometimes you get sick. Ma. You have to accept that. Of course, you take a step to see the doctor. And you will, another very important thing, you have to have harmony in the society. You must accept other people's culture, traditions, religions, their creed, diversity. Uh, and you accept people for who they are. Uh, whether they are, you know, a male or female, uh, whether they are homosexual or, or heterosexual, we respect them, right? 
uh, for who they are. As long as they don't do all the bad things. Uh, if they do the bad things, we also don't condemn. We are no judge. But we maybe uh, be careful. We do not uh, do those things or condone those things. Uh. So in this way, uh, we will promote tolerance. So when you have tolerance now, then there will be more harmony. Uh, today, you find, uh, let's say, in the country, a lot of trouble uh, is because uh, people uh, are not able to embrace peacefully other people of other religions, other creeds, other gender, right, uh, other sexual orientation, and so on. Uh. So this is the problem now. So that's why I say acceptance is the key right, to true peace and happiness. Acceptance of things that happen inevitably cannot prevent that. Right? Let's say uh, people are caught uh, in terrible things like floods or even earthquakes. Different people respond differently. There are some who can accept it most peacefully, say they don't suffer so much. Others cannot. Uh, they even uh, lament, uh, lamentation sets in and then some may even commit suicide and so on. Right? So you find this is a very good quotation. Serenity. Serenity means it's a peacefulness and calmness right, of the mind. A very, very calm, peaceful, a good state of mind. It comes when you trade expectations for acceptance, which means that you do not expect this. I should be like this. I expect this. I expect that. You don't have that sort of thing, expectations. You don't just know what's going to come. But when the things come, you can accept peacefully. Right? Anything that happens um, based on causes, conditions, you accept. And then those that you can uh, handle to bring about a change, you do. You cannot, you, know, you keep on accepting the thing, you see. So this is the important thing. Uh, this is a meditation, very nice picture. Right? You contemplate on the things. Lah. Now let us go on to number 14 now. It's forgiveness. I think you are familiar with the proverb, uh, to err is human to forgive divine, that every human being makes mistakes, isn't it? Right? You can't help it. We are all whirling, sir, with all the greed, hatred, delusion. So, if somebody has done something, maybe you say bad to you, lah, maybe has used terrible words on you, or maybe stab you at the back, <laughs> in a sense, the sense that betray you, or you know, do some things, uh, uh, not out of gratitude. Uh, 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 so, you feel Terrible, you say, I will hate him for life. I will never forgive him everything. You cause your own suffering. What about you? You also, we also, might have, uh, sometimes uh, not mindful, uh, that not knowing that what we say or what we do uh, have offended certain people also. Just as we also have committed wrong things and also we want other people to forgive. So likewise also, we will uh, develop this quality of being forgiving to people whom you perceive have done wrong to you. If you don't, you keep this uh, anger, hatred, ill will, all in your heart and mind, uh, this is very harmful. You will go on to the period where you are dying and you find that there's still thing is disturbing you. You cannot let go of those things. Uh, it's not a good state. And it's not a good state and those terrible states of anger, hatred, uh, revenge, feeling, or the gains other people uh, will lead you to a uh, woeful or suffering rebirth. And not only that, uh, when rebirth takes place, you find if you have all those negative states still inside uh, of hatred, anger, and so on, then the rebirth will not be good. So you see how important it is uh, to forgive a person. And this uh, we have to teach also uh, when the person is young. But it doesn't mean that the, young, the older people don't have to forgive. Everybody, but we emphasize on the young because uh, when we develop this, then naturally when they become uh, older adults, uh, then uh, they will have this quality. Really. So they begin to let go of the grudges or uh, all those, you know, anger, uh, you feel uh, you want to have a revenge. Uh, and then it will be very good for your health. Your physical and mental health is very healing. Imagine you have uh, anger and enmity, you will, uh, oh, your brain and your uh, endocrine organs all produce all the harmful chemicals. No? So, who is suffering? You will be suffering. So, this forgiveness uh, will develop in you this compassion again or empathy uh, uh, to feel for other, purpose, other people's problems. They have their dukkha, but they also have the 
some not so good qualities. Uh. So just as us. Uh. So we understand we have wisdom. So forgiveness develops. Right? So that is a very good, uh, important thing for you to consider the moral value of virtue. Uh, of sorry, forgiveness. Uh, the moral virtue of forgiveness. Now let us go on to the next one, which is slide number 15 already. Right? Perseverance. Uh, you know, motivators have found this thing. They examine all the various good qualities or virtues of successful people. Uh, uh, patience, uh, honesty. Uh. We have done so many, really, right? And uh, no, very interesting finding I read uh, in motivation books. Uh, they say one common thing uh, that runs through the trait uh, of all the great people and successful people uh, is this thing. They didn't use this word perseverance. They use the word persistence. Persistence means... Uh, perseverance, to keep on going and not giving up so easily. Ah, they found this common trait. So now you realize how important it is perseverance to persist on, uh, not to give up even though you fall already, you have to get up. That's why there is this saying, failure is not failure. Failure is failure when you fail to get up after you fall. Ah, so you can see how important this is in our worldly life as well as in Dharma practice. Now, worldly life, I have given the example of Thomas Edison. He persevered on how many hundreds of times in experiment until he found the electric bulb. There are many, many other examples. right? So we have to teach the young people, right? especially young, but then the older people also have to learn this lesson also. Teaching the young the value of perseverance and help them understand the importance. Connected with that, determination, azaman, dressing, hard work, and resilience. Resilience means can withstand uh, some hardship, can withstand some trouble, can withstand some obstacles that block you, uh, but you have the resilience, the strength. The opposite will land back. Uh, yeah, give up, you cannot. Uh, susah. So how do you have success? Ah, so perseverance is tied up with all these things like determination, hard work, and resilience. But then let's look at perseverance from the point of view of Dharma practice. Now, you look at the Buddha's life, you'll be inspired. He, of course, as a Bodhisattva, he saw the Dukkha of Sun Lao Ping Shi and so on and so on. So he already made up his mind. He was determined to find and search for the truth. And he really left the palace or maybe he's uh, mentioned or what. Uh, left, even the wife and the child was, uh, Rahula was uh, just born. Uh. So he was that determined, not because he was selfish or what. He wanted to find the truth uh, to help all people to overcome the suffering. That was a very fantastic renunciation of sacrifice. And then uh, for six years, he persevered on. He was persistent. He did not say, oh, yeah, this one, after one, two years, are very difficult. I give up. Really, I go back to the palace. Uh, go back to the good life. No. He persevered until, even at the time, under the Bodhi tree. Uh, he sat there uh, and then made that determination. You know, I will not get up from this uh, tree here, uh, the base of the tree, until I get enlightened. And he really got enlightened. Right? At 35. So, uh, when you reflect, I posted the stories of the Buddha right in the various posts. Uh, I think altogether five posts. Uh, uh, you can read about his life and so many things. Uh. So that is very important perseverance, persistent. So the motivators found that persistence uh, is the golden thread, you know, that runs through all successful people, all great people. And I would say also in Dharma practice, these two qualities, diligence, perseverance, very important. It must be diligent. It's connected, it's really hard work, you see. And determination. And not to give up so easily. As these three I specially selected to illustrate the point, these three images, uh, you see, uh, the person running that uh, maybe in the Olympic race or the hurdles or what, uh, right? Even uh, falling and really still getting up and trying his best, persisting on. And this one, uh, this one is not uh, going against the traffic lights. No, uh, I don't think that, oh, stop, uh, but then go, go. No, no, it's not that. It means uh, uh, you find in life and you want to do certain projects, so many come, so many things come to block you, obstruct you, no? but you still persevere. You overcome the obstacle. Go, 
go. You still climb up, climb up until you reach the peak. Uh, even got so many halangan that you don't give up so easily. Uh, that is the meaning of this picture. A very good picture. Uh, with all the halangan or obstacles, hindrances, you still persist. Even you fall. And this one is even uh, more dramatic. Uh, all the things that come and block him, he just push them aside. You still will go on to the goal even when he falls. Even when he falls, uh, after falling, he doesn't say, I give up uh, very hard. Uh. No. right? He will still get up <laughs> and go. Uh, that is this illustration of the perseverance. So the graphics uh, you reflect uh, into your minds then this will grow, right? So you see, uh, I have done uh, so many moral qualities. These are what we pick. Uh, there are many other good ones to show, you see. So I hope that you have learned some very good educational things and also very good Dharma. Most of the things are overlap with the Dharma. Uh, they are Dharma qualities also. Uh, qualities that help you to progress in the Dharma. Right? So now we come to the last slide, which is the ending slide now. And I give the reminder, those who practice moral values constantly will live life much more peacefully. Naturally, if you lead a virtuous life, morally upright, uh, morally righteous, right? Don't do the bad things, the bad uh, actions, uh, wrong deeds in terms of the mind, speech, or body, then your life will be more peaceful, more happy. Good things will come also. The fruits follow the karma, isn't it? The good things. So you see how important it is to practice moral values. And in the practice of Dharma, this comes under sila, morality that we must have. Like you know of the five precepts. So that is a very important reminder for you. And just to sum up with this animated image, just this, be good, do good. That's all. <laughs> uh, dharma is that. Be good, do good. Right? Don't be bad. Don't do bad things. Right? So don't have to go and read all the or tick 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 books, uh, but still not good and still don't do good. It's useless. Right? But I'm not saying that you shouldn't read and so on. Uh, right? So now we have come to the end of this presentation. I hope boys and girls and students of the different levels, primary or secondary or tertiary, and all the youth members and also parents and grandparents, teachers of uh, Sunday school and Dharma classes, so I would like to thank and say sadhu to all of you because you have taken time and put in the effort to follow this very educational presentation. And I hope uh, you can help to spread this uh, presentation. Uh, they have many, many benefits. So uh, let us now uh, put our palms together and say sadhu three times. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Uh, to all who have followed this presentation, right, may you all be well, happy, peaceful, and may you always practice moral values, right? Uh, conscientiously. Uh, take care.